as I may start, just to thank you very much. Um, and uh, apart from the content and the uh, argumentative power of what you said, what I like very much personally is the respect that comes through, the, uh, the attitude of respect, the respect to people, to other societies, other countries, but also to uh, the difficult process finding the truth. So <laughs> uh, I like that very much, and I have have some um, have some uh, some remarks or some questions to you, but we may also um, invite the audience to come up to questions. Do you want to make a <laughs> remark first, and then I have another? Um, yes, the um, um, okay. one thing about the um, dismissing behavior. Um, it's, it's certainly it's, uh, it's difficult and they try to go out as you said from one therapist to another one so and um, the uh, what we would use the, uh, the word of the, uh, the, the concept of the inner child um, as, as far as I have understood you uh, a, a, a parent can learn, uh, or um, a, a client can learn to deal with it. And um, it, we would use the, the concept of the inner child. If you, your inner child reacts in the old way, you may, for a certain extent, need somebody, like some therapist, to give you the right approach. But then you have to learn to do it internally, to go into the adult situation to protect and console and even hack your inner child. And, and then uh, you uh, we would say you, you got on the safe track and so we all have the tendency to fall back every now and then to our attitudes and eventually come back. Uh, uh, the second remark I uh, would like uh, to do is about what you, in your system, is called the disorganized attachment. This in the old um, psychological <coughs> terms was very often um, the hysterical. And uh, in uh, Virginia Satir's terms, it would be um, irrelevant behavior. It's all more or less the same. And I found that uh, in seeing it from the a psychoanalytic point, uh, the counter-transference is all the time the same. It's, it, it's, same, it's so same that it's even to the point of stupidity, the same. <laughs> um, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't look like. So there is a trick in it. And uh, the, the, the counter-transference is, oh, this, this person is so so ill, you have to care about it. This lasts for three days. <laughs> and after the, the third, or at least, at last, the fourth day, it shifts completely. He's demotivated, yeah? he's hostile, everything that is on your side. But this is a counter-transference. And if the, if the therapist sticks with that, He's lost, and the client is lost. The therapy is lost. So uh, the point is to know that is my counter-transference, and then to stay with, I stay safe with you, even whatever you do, you may make a little bit fire in my garden, or a, <laughs> that's probably a small not, one. Not in my garden. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm exaggerating. <laughs> yes, and, and, and um, I, it, to say this last sentence, I, I found a certain closeness of this part to um, the, the the very touching uh, movie sequence from the uh, Boy in Turkey, and. To my 
to my mind, when he was really uh, avoiding and that hostile shift forth and back, um, the mother did not react exceedingly positively to my view because she was too late. She was too late. I thought if she would have interfered early and stayed on it, and then beautifully holding the, the back of the hand and making strokes like this, uh, this would be a better interference. What do you think? About this little boy from Turkey. Uh, as attachment researchers uh, do research with infants without speech, we can exchange our tapes all over the world because often for research it's important not to know what the parents are like because you, you tend to have a, a prejustice. Uh, this is a cold mother so the child must be avoided or this is a rejecting mother so the child must be disorganized. So what we can only sh um, evaluate is what does a child do in this stressful separation situation. And even if you say, yes, if the mother would have reacted sooner, more sensitively to the early signs of the stress, yes, but um, if she had done that all this first, <coughs> then we wouldn't be disorganized after, ten, after 12 months. So in a sense, in that very moment, mothers really can't do much in terms of repairing. It takes a long time. And this counter-transfer is <coughs> in my mind. Somebody is working with adoptive families. And the counter-transfer is very dangerous in, for adoptive mothers if they have a traumatized child. Because they retaliate easily, say that you don't want my care. So what you describe from the therapist can also happen to adoptive mothers. But in terms of this one incidence of strange situation with a Turkish child, in that moment, there's almost no intervention possible. It is a longer process if you want it to. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, fine, there's a, a long thing, especially about the conflict. I would like to make a comment. One comment. Of course, as someone doing psychotherapy, I'm interested in how do we help someone correct the insecurity. And uh, we work mainly with groups. So the question I have, but it's also an observation, is that there's also a corrective experience for someone being attached in the group. And it's a powerful resource. I've also seen that I've had clients where the attachment to the parents was very difficult, but they had a, 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 a large sense of solidarity with the brothers and sisters and felt a lot of security there. So with our clients, uh, many of them really need the group as a kind of safe base, even more than they need us. There are others where the relationship to us is more particular. Maybe you, I'm curious what you have to say to that. Uh, only a very short comment. Uh, yes, the attachment person doesn't necessarily have to be a parent. Uh, now, we do those studies of children born at risk in risky families. Uh, they show that often it's an older sibling, or that it's a sibling group, especially if parents are dysfunctional, the siblings will come together and try to care for themselves. In alcoholic families, often the elder sibling is responsible for the younger siblings. So I can see that a group may be more, um, somebody may be more open to the group, like to siblings, than to an older dysfunctional parent that they had experienced. And so, uh, yes, I, and then the second part is that during adolescence, the brain is really restructuring. It's uh, in a way getting a little more away from the parents and close, of course, to peers. So in that part, there's also a high chance of repairing uh, negative parental experiences with more positive experience with peers. 
if it works out. Yeah. If it works out. <coughs> Thank you. There's no time for one more comment from me. Uh, in terms of the examples of insecure attachment form that are at the background of our most difficult patients, the ambivalent and the unstructured. My experience has been that it's true, they are difficult, and second, that I need to, or they need help getting a different inner structure, that a, a, the bonding work alone is not enough. For instance, those people who are um, ambivalent that they can't take what they receive, they often have an inner discounting system that they've learned. It's not conscious, but everything they get, even if they re accept some uh, warmth from the therapist or the group at one time, they discount it internally. It's not in their system. And my experience has been, if I can name this and help them to practice an internal behavior, I call it, it's like they, they're like a barrel with not a bottom in it. And they get response from the environment, the groups are usually positively um, oriented, and it helps for a little bit, but then it's gone. And they need to learn to put a, a bottom onto it. And it's, it's a di digestive problem. They can't digest what they get, usually from this background. So they're not easy to help, but uh, the people I have helped with this kind of <coughs> insecure attachment form, they're usually, they have a structural problem inside. And this, it's similar, but of course a different <clears throat> different theme with people who are so dis, dis, uh, disoriented that they act out their, their stress. And if we have excess with them, it's also only if we have enough alliance that we can get a behavioral contract that they can learn to accept limits as something that's positive for them and a way to be able to really become a part of the community of the group and then later community of the for the, its work and, it, and the counter-transference is an issue that one has to be aware of. That's my point. Do you have any questions? Any questions from the group? Yes? Uh, yes, I want to follow this directly. The most important problem for the client is to express and to understand his pain about the experience. He doesn't express and he doesn't get in contact with this feeling. He tries to avoid it and he makes a lot of problems and so on. And so we must establish trust for getting narrow to this feeling of pain and rupture in the relationship. And all the time he tries to get out of this pain feeling. So we, if we come narrow, narrow with that, we approach more and more a good relationship. Sometimes people have also parts of them who, that have 
seems to have experienced some warmth and closeness. But if you address that part, and we can say when we ask about the judgment experiences, we always ask, was there anybody, not just mother, father, but grandmother, sometimes even um, a youth leader or, or the parent of a, of a childhood friend, was there anybody whom you could trust? Uh, and that could be this part that you think, yes, maybe this person has experienced once a, a reliable relationship, a caring relationship. But when you then address this part, he gets in a terrible conflict. And we would interpret, a child actually wishes to have good parents. This is why they often even um, excuse abusive parents or do not admit that they have been sent away. So. The conflict is, I wish I had very good parents. But now that you, therapists say, no, you didn't have good parents, but the other person may have been a good attachment figure. Um, this conflict, but, but I, I need good parents. So uh, I will defend my bad parents as if they were good parents. But of course, they know inner, in their inner, it's not true. So this, this need, uh, I see it often in adoptive children. They need to excuse the parent who had given them away. Uh, but they cannot accept that they have been rejected. Because this, in anthropological terms, means they have been actually death candidates. Mm -hmm. Okay. 